All right, welcome everybody. I assume you can hear the sound of my voice. If so, raise your hand or do something. Oh, good, people are raising their hand or doing something. All right, thank you very much. Well, we have a, a large turnout, at least of people registered for today. Um, I have a copy of a handout, which is the document that's going to be I'm going to be discussing, and we're going to take a look at the website and do a bunch of different things. So I'm going to give people a few minutes to wander in, find a chair, and all of that sort of stuff. Let me share my screen. All right. So a CRM, um, Customer Relationship Management System, integrated with a website with the website having something called IDX, Internet Data Exchange, which allows the website to interface with MLS listings, yours and others that are in your MLS. Um, how important is this, right? How, is, how important is it that you as a real estate agent have a website and that you have a CRM and that you learn how to use it and you use it? It kind of depends. Right, it kind of depends. I know agents who do not have a website. Right, let's say you represent buyers primarily. Right, you represent buyers. What do you need the website for? Right, so people could go there and search for homes. Many of them have heard of Zillow, some of them have even heard of Redfin and Realtor.com and Trulia and Homes.com, and on and on and on it goes. So, I know agents that are relatively successful, making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in income, who primarily work with buyers, and they don't have a website, because everybody's got Zillow, and they just, you know, text them and say, this is the one I want to see, and they set up appointments to go show the properties. Um, there was even a time when I did not have, what I mean, I owned a normal real estate agent website, but um, in my email signatures and everything that I was promoting, I was not promoting the website. I didn't tell anybody what the URL was to it. In my email signatures, I had two links. One of the links was to find your dream home today. And I was using this sort of a weird service. I don't even know if they're around anymore, but it was a weird service where people could do home searches and there was a bunch of different criteria that you would normally see in the MLS or on Zillow. You could search for homes with natural lighting. You could search for, you could search for homes based upon their proximity to Phil's Coffee, right? It was sort of a, it was just a fun site. I liked it. And, if, and by the way, I know that I have people probably from all over the state, you know, um, on this call. And if you're thinking, I've never heard of Phil's Coffee, we don't have Phil's coffee. All I can say is I, I feel sorry for you. You know, I just, I feel sorry. But anyhow, um, but then th that site started to get wonky. And anyhow, so if you were, if you were in my database and I was marketing to you, I would say, if you want to buy a home, click here. And all that was, was a home search site. If you want to sell your home, this was the second link, click here, instant valuation, you know, find out what your home is worth. That's all I use. I did not use the normal real estate agent website. Right? So the first question is, do you care? Why would you have one? Do you need one? You know, and this is why it could be more important because nowadays, um, if I were thinking of hiring you, let's say to list my home, I might look and see, you know, do you have a website? And I might look at the website and this is sort of the point of today's session, I might judge you based upon your website, right? And so if your website looks terrible, if you're missing information, if it doesn't have your picture, if it really looks like you don't ever use it, then I might judge that you're not much of an internet marketing specialist, you just might not be. Now, the, the uh, I made a video which is on my YouTube channel, which is Upthink Real Estate, 
It's one of the 2,000 or so videos I, I've made on how you can run a real estate business just out of using Google free or pretty much essentially free Google products. But that's just a cheap system and it's not really as effective as you could be. So I'm assuming that you're interested in having a professional website, having a customer relationship management system and that you're willing to spend a little bit of time to learn how to use it. And if that's all true, KV Core is really, really good. Now, some of you know that my, my history, right? I used to be a productivity coach for Keller Williams. I was a certified trainer at Keller Williams. I was a tech coordinator for Keller Williams. And I'm telling you, this is a better system than they had at KW. I used to be the vice president of a large Century 21 group. Century 21 is owned by Rheology. Rheology also owns Coldwell Banker and a bunch of others. The system that Century 21 used was the same as Coldwell Bankers. The, it was the same one. This is a much better program than what we had at Century 21. Rheology is much better than what we had at Keller Williams. I'm just saying that, right, just saying that. Now, um, and so what I want to do is I want to go through, and this is going to be a series. Right. My goal for today is to get your setup complete so that it's not an embarrassment. Right. You know, now next week, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about setting up the website. Right. This is the first session is about getting your basic KV core system set up. And if you're in a real estate company that doesn't have technology like this and you're interested in finding out how you, for a very low nominal fee each month, can have access to all of this stuff, send out a text to me. I'm, I'm happy you know, to talk to you. All right. The first link, um, I found out this is a link to the company that, that produces KV Core is called Inside Real Estate. And one of the things I like about EXP and the relationship to KV Core is that EXP <clears throat> does not own KV Core. <clears throat> I'm happy, All right? Because Keller Williams owns Command and uh, Rheology owns Zap. And if you're at Intero, I believe the platform is actually a wise agent. But a lot of real estate agents are reluctant to put their database into a system owned by the broker. Compass is another example, because what if you wanted to leave, right? What if you what if you did, right? They've got your database. I mean, who knows? Maybe Gary Keller is reading your emails at night and or the guy from Compass, right, is going through to see who you're showing. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they're that bored. I probably not. But but you get the idea. So EXP does not own KV Core. You could sign up for KV Core if you're not a member of EXP, but it might cost $500 a month, right? It's, it, it's a pricey. Other brokers have it. Now, the reason why that's important to me is, is that because, because they don't own it, EXP does not own KV Core, there's a firewall, which means if you did want to leave, if you did want to change companies, they're, they're not, they don't, EXP does not have your database. All right. Now, I'm going to talk about, these are some of the, the topics we're going to be covering over the next few weeks. Um, I've included a link to a website and a video on how to set things up for the do-it-yourselfers. And I'm also starting with a link to a checklist, right? And this is provided by EXP, and we're sort of going to go through all this. But if you're interested, for those of you, do it yourself, you know, that, that's something to think about. Some initial thoughts. You're going to need to have a professional headshot picture uh, and a digital photo. And, you know, you could be a little crazy if you want to, but, but we're also trying to convince people that, you know, we're a professional. So I've seen real estate agents. One guy that I was coaching in, uh, elsewhere, he had his picture that he used on his business cards and on his website was one of those novelty photos that he had taken someplace, probably at a bar or something, where he was wearing a hat with stripes, a little cap and a striped outfit. And he was looking through jail bars, right? Bars, you know, like he was in jail. He looked like a convict is sort of, and and and, the, and he, there he is smiling, you know, looking through the, the bars of the jail. And his slogan was, I'm not making this up, 
that he was the most wanted man in real estate. Yeah. I had another uh, person I was working with who had on Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. They have people that draw caricatures, you know, your nose is big. And, and he had a, one of the, and he used that as his picture, right? Now, I would, uh, I would pass on that kind of stuff because people will be judging you based upon your picture and your digital photo, right? Um, you know, I'm just saying that. Now, one of the things you might do, is, and this is sort of a pro tip, is one of the things you might want to do is to register your own domain, right? Be the master of your own domain. And the reason I'm saying that is, is that EXP is going to give you through KV Core what's called a subdomain. It's a link that works where people can see your, let me see, I'm starting to get, is it easy to download the database if it's needed? Yes, it is. Right. I mean, not, I'll try to look at the questions as they come, but a lot of this I'm going to cover. It's very easy to export your database should you want to. It's easy to import it. I'm going to be covering that. All right. But let me just, so why would you want to have a domain? ESB is going to give you a domain. It's actually called subdomain, and you don't have to pay for hosting. You don't have to pay to register it. You don't have to do any of that. Now, on my um, um so let's say you're just getting started at eXp and you just you want to order business cards and you want to order you know the the website i'll cover how to do that but um you would what are you going to put on your business cards because it could take seven to ten business days before eXp gives you your subdomain so one of the options is you could go and register a domain and then godaddy it shouldn't cost very much and I even have a link to an article about tips for picking a domain. But one of the most obvious ones is your name. So, for example, if it, michaeldevlin.exprealty.com, that's my subdomain. But if I were to put in uh, michaeldevlin.com, right, that's a URL that I own. But notice where it ends up, it goes right to the same place, right? Exactly to the same place. So um, there, the options that I have, because I've registered a domain, is, is that if I decided that I wanted to change websites, I don't have to change business cards and all everything in my email signature. I don't have to, all I have to do is go in to the host, GoDaddy, or whichever one you're using, and change the forwarding, right? Um, if you don't care, right, whether or not it says michaeldevlin.com or michaeldevlin.exprealty.com, then you don't need to change anything. You can get away with just using that. That's a cheap op option, right? It's a cheap option. And I put in a link to something on domain forwarding. This is not a difficult thing to do if you are, um, you might want to share your screen. I was, wasn't I? I, wasn't it sharing for a moment? Sorry about that. I don't know. Sorry about that. I thought it was. I thought for sure I clicked on share screen, but um, well, I wanted to share. Anyhow, you have the hand. I will. I will share. You. I'm, so I guess just to repeat what I had done is that if I go to my website, michaeldevlin.exprealty.com, that's what you see. If I type in michaeldevlin.com, right, which is a domain I've uh, registered, I own with GoDaddy, notice it goes to the same site. Also notice that even though I typed in michaeldevlin.com, the site says michaeldevlin.exprealty.com, and that's because I did not mask the forward, right? So domain forwarding, I have a link here, which is going to show you how to do it. However, it's not that difficult. Um, you don't want to mask. And mask means that it would always say michaeldevlin.com that has search engine optim optimization issues. It also has issues. Sometimes the links don't work, right? So I just do a forward. It goes to my EXP provided website. You don't want to buy a domain. Use the one they give you. Now, if you're new to EXP, you need to log in 
to enterprise, right? You need to log in, which is the EXP site where a lot of business is done. You need to log in, you need to go to optional services and you would need to go down to where it says KV Core and you need to request to get KV Core. You need to do that, right? And as, as I put here, it could be take seven to 10 business days inside real estate who's doing this right the behind this they're a little behind right now um i think personally i think to some extent they're behind because exp is growing really really fast and so there are lots of people that are doing this and they're setting up websites you want to do this right away five things to focus on with your kv core profile your picture, MLS ID, I'm going to delete this actually, but I, I know I can't delete it from yours. I'll talk about the NRDS number. It's not as important. The about me section, I could have put in quotation marks, email signature, and lender contact is something we may do today, but we may do you know, at another time. And I've got some links and things like that, but let's just see how it works. All right. So um, when you log in, this is assuming, right, in that checklist, I'm assuming you know to how, lo how to log in. You can see under my activity, I've got, um, I use the system. Now, I'm not using the system necessarily the way you're going to be using the system, but I'm going to, we'll talk about that. We'll, we'll talk about that. Notice there's training over here there's promoting a list and playbooks we're going to cover how to do that activities what we want to do today is to get the system set up for you and in the top right you're going to see your name and as you go down you're going to see the email i've chosen this is the email this is my website link but what we're going to do is we're going to go to my profile or what I mean, you know, your, your profile, but you get the idea, right? So if this is the first time you clicked on it, we're going to want to edit the profile. And the first thing you might want to do is put in that picture, right? You also could, um, you, know, you want to upload a picture, that's where your headshot goes. Um, you just click on it or you drag the image. The name is here. And this is the title that's going to be displayed. Now, sometimes agents want to say, I'm a, a realtor. Uh, R E A L T O R. I'm a realtor. Why not? You're paying them so much money you know, for, the, for that. Why not you know, brag about it? Put in one of those vertical lines. Say real estate consultant, area specialist, Silicon Valley area specialist, um, whatever, right? Whatever turns you on. Um, but you can put do that. Um, and we're going to save as a, a little bit later. And then on the right, you're going to see these three numbers. Um, first of all, the, you, the MLS ID varies by MLS. So I'm in MLS listings and my MLS ID, in other words, the number that MLS listings wants from me, if I'm logging in to the MLS is my DRE number. Right? Now in some other MLSs, it's an NRDS number. Now, even though I went ahead and put in my NRDS number, I'm telling you there is no place in this platform where they actually use it. Right, no place where they actually use it. So if you don't know your NRDS number and you don't put it in, it's not going to affect anything because there's nothing where it goes. The vendor ID number, don't change it, don't delete it, don't touch it. It's a generated number by inside real estate. I'm not really sure why they even show it to you. The only one of those three numbers that you need to worry about is the number that the MLS asks for when you log in right that number which is typically nrds or dre nrds is a well a national realtor designation something or other i, I don't know right. um that's a number you may need later to connect some of the different 
programs like RPR, the Realtors Property Resource, and MLS Connect, and Zip Forms, but right now we don't need to worry about it. Contact information. It doesn't matter. Um, notice it gives me three phone lines that I can put in. It doesn't matter how many of these boxes that say show on site I click on, it's only going to show one on my site, right? So I could put in, that's an office number, I can put in another number, if I had another number, I, I can do whatever I want to, but it's only going to show one. You want to show a number on the site. Now, let's say I don't put anything in here. Or I put in phone numbers, but I don't click on show on site. Does that mean no phone number will show on my site? And the answer is not necessarily, because KV Core has something called a smart number. And that smart number is sort of a generic number, right? You can get your own. I'm going to cover that in our follow up sessions when we're talking about how to get leads, how to close transactions, how to do follow up out of KV Core which is next week and the week after, and it's going to, we're going to do this in a series. But it may put the KV Core Smart number on your website, and that doesn't necessarily mean that a lead would go to you, unless you're paying $27 a month for your own Smart number. Now, if I'll talk in a different session about the value of Smart numbers, I use it every week. I send out hundreds of text messages to people every week, and I don't want to do that through my cell phone because Google will get, I mean, you know, and my phone company will get mad at me. I just want to do that through the smart number. Let's see. Um, be aware that the smart number shows a spam in many networks. Yes. And that's because, especially the generic one, is, is that um, lots of real estate agents are using it and they're spamming people. I'm just saying I'm able to send hundreds of them out every week and people reply. I can show you in my CRM, people are interacting with my smart number all the time. So not everybody does it show up as spam. Now, if you don't want your, your primary cell phone number to be on the website, right? The, so people could see it and call you anytime they wanted to. Um, another option is to get a Google voice number, which doesn't cost anything, assuming that you have a Gmail account, which doesn't cost anything. And this number here, which is my office number that my assistant answers, is actually a Google Voice number. Right? Um, but you need to make a decision what you want to do. Email, I have my, um, this is a domain, michaeldevlin.com. Notice my website is michaeldevlin.com and my email is michaeldevlin.com because I've registered the domain. I'm using Gmail, but what I've done is I've upgraded my Gmail service to what's called, it used to be called G Suite, now it's called Workplace. It's $6 a month. It's Gmail on steroids, right? So I have, it's a Gmail account, but the domain is not a Gmail domain. How important is this? It, it depends. I'm in Silicon Valley. Right. I'm in Silicon Valley. I got a listing one time in Almaden, which for those of you that are not in Silicon Valley is a relatively expensive area of San Jose. You know, it's an expensive area. And I was interviewing for the listing and the guy had interviewed several other agents and he picked me. And I had asked him, I said, you know, why did you pick me? And he was showing me he pushed out the business cards from the other three agents that he'd interview. One of them was a Hotmail email. One of them was a Yahoo email. And the third one was AOL, you know. And now in your area, you might say, I've had people say, well, a lot of top agents use Yahoo. It doesn't seem to hold them back. I, I know, but this guy was a marketing person at a tech company. And he's tapping on the one that was AOL and he was shaking his head. And first of all, he said, all three of these agents claim to be sophisticated when it came to internet marketing. Hotmail, Yahoo, AOL. And he referred to the AOL as the Chuck E. Cheese of email clients. Right? 
and he picked me because I was the only one that actually had a real email. I've sold homes to people that work at Google and people that work at Google do not use Gmail email in their Google communications. Their email says google.com, not Gmail. Gmail is a personal email service. Now, in, in many people don't care, but if you're in Silicon Valley, like I am, there are people that know the difference, right? I'm just saying. And I um, use notice that from email, I put in my same email because if I don't do that, it's going to say my EXP email address, right? Which is not a big deal. But anyhow, if somebody replies, in addition to it replying here, I also would see it at my um, mdevlin at michaeldevlin.com. I could put in the from name. So, for example, if I wanted it to say the Michael Devlin Group, right, or something like that, I could whatever, right? If I if I felt like it. My website. Um, this is the URL that KV Core and EXP has given me. Um, I could type in MichaelDevlin.com, but it just forwards anyhow. If I had another website, I could put it here. I don't actually see it going anywhere. The lender thing I'm going to talk about later when we get into web pages. Um, I'm a GRI. I actually have GRI stands for Graduate of the Realtors Institute. It's not a big deal. You know, we used to make the joke back in the day, you know, that he's got a GRI, but he doesn't make any MO anyway. You know, um, do I use it because that is a do I use michaeldevlin.com and say because of long-term consistency? Not really. Um, I don't care about long-term consistency so much. I prefer to use my own email when I'm sending things to clients. I just do, right? But you could use the bit. I don't plan on leaving EXP. Things are going really, really well. But who knows, right? And when I was at Trevor Williams, um, I left, and although I had transactions that were going on, the first thing they did is tried to shut off my Keller Williams email, right? So I'm just, I, I don't think that that's a big issue, but I just sort of prefer to have my own email, right? So you can put in designations. There's a lot of them that you could, I think, pick from. However, um, they don't seem to show up anywhere. So if you are proud of your designations, you'd put them someplace else. You can put in licenses, but uh, that doesn't necessarily show up anywhere either. So I don't, I don't really worry about that. You should put in your social media accounts, right? Now, um, I've actually, I've got a lot of Facebook pages, right? If you're wondering what a lot looks like, more than 20, you know, something like that. So I, um, uh, I have a lot of Facebook pages. Um, I should be using a business page for this, but I didn't. I have a Twitter handle. I have a LinkedIn. I have my YouTube. I didn't bother to put in Pinterest and, and Instagram yet, but I put in my license number, um, positions. You could pick some things like that. I don't really do anything with that and selected languages. Um, sarcasm, unfortunately, is not on the list. So I had nothing else I could pick. But if you speak Spanish or Hindi or something like that, go ahead and uh, go ahead and pick it. Um, I'm going to get back to the questions later. Once we get to the end, I'll go through the questions. I'm, I, it's, um, I'm just going to go back when we get to the end. All right about me it's all about me right so one of the things you might want to do is spend some time on this section now in my helpful little handout right i hope it's helpful i have a realtor a bio checklist you're going to need to create one right you're going to be asked um many times when you go to linkedin and you create a Facebook business page and you do all those different things over and over again, you're going to be asked to put in a bio. 
right? So why not start writing one now? And one of the options um, is that one of the options, and this is my recommendation, is that you can go ahead and create the bio like in a Google Doc, and you can then copy and paste it. And by the way, because of the way the system works, you can copy and paste it with formatting and it'll, it'll, it'll go through. So we don't want to make it too long, right? I've seen real estate agents' bios that go on and on and on, right? You know, it's got a barcode like you get at Safeway. You know, it's got a link to the high school transcripts. You know, you've got the photo. Looks like it was taken, you know, in their high school prom, right? But they, they're a lot older. But um, you might want to spend some time on this, right? Don't make it too long. Get a professional headshot. You're the brand. EXP is not the brand. If you're at Keller Williams, Keller Williams isn't the brand. Kobo Banker is the brand. The Compass isn't the brand. And now I know that a lot of those companies are going to tell you they're the brand. EXP doesn't tell you that. But a lot of those other companies are going to say, you need us. You need the brand. You've got to market the brand. It's all about the brand. It's not about the brand. It's about you. Right. People don't really care. And surveys of buyers and sellers have shown this, whether what company you're at, they, it's about you. That's why you want your own picture. Right. Um, bullets, photos, animations, videos, list your achievements, highlight your local knowledge. I, I put together a few other little statements. What makes you different? If you've got testimonials, other social proof. Now, I've had some people say, well, I'm a new agent and I don't have any, so I don't have any testimonials. I don't have any reviews. Well, let me ask you this. Do you know anybody that you've known for a while, maybe worked with in business or not? Maybe somebody who owes you money. And you could say to them, look, at, I'm putting together, you know, a bio and for my real estate business. And I was wondering, would you be willing to write something that says that you would recommend that people use my services, right? That you've known me and you work with me and that you would recommend that anybody thinking of buying, selling, or investing in real estate would use my services. Would you do that, right? Again, easier if they owe you money, right? Or a relative or something like that. Um, that you notice, I didn't. they're not going to say that they used you as an agent because maybe they have it, but you could get a couple of them. You should write in the third person. Don't say, I, I, me, you know, don't, you know, just don't, don't, don't do that. And uh, make it a video and embed. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so the idea here, what's, what's your background? Why would this make you a great real estate agent? Have you ever been in marketing? Have you ever been in sales? Have you ever been in negotiation? Have you ever been in customer service? Have you ever done project management? All of those are transferable skills. So when we do a real estate agent resume, right, as it were, we're not going to do it like we would do a resume for a tech job where you say, you know, this is, you know, I, I, I was at this company for this number of years and this was my role, right? But that's not what we're doing. What we're doing is we're looking for transferable skills that you've got negotiation skills, that you've got project management skills, that you have a marketing skill, right? Where are you located and do you have any local knowledge of the area? Did you grow up in the area? Have you lived in the area? Have you worked in the area? Why would this make you a great real estate agent? What's your track record? Now, if you're saying, wait, wait a second, I'm a brand new agent and I don't have a track record. Um, as a CFP, my personal website offers a link to real estate services. It's EXP and has to use of a general website to link to your, you could link anything you want to, to your EXP website. It's a question I've been getting. Your certified financial planning website has a link to real estate. Sure, you can do that. Next week, when we get into tricking out your website, 
I'm going to show you how you can link. I'm linked. I have a real estate school. I'm linked to that. Um, I, have, I have a bunch of links on my web page, and you, could, you can cross-link the different websites. Nothing wrong, nothing illegal or immoral about that. Back to track record. Even if you're a brand new agent, are you, um, that doesn't mean you don't have a track record. You must have done something, hopefully, maybe, right, that was meaningful, valuable, that was you were the top this at that, or you did this at that, or something, right? One of the agents that, you know, I was talking to, and you know, he, he told me that he had five kids. And so I suggested that he put down that he's a top producer, you know, but um, but but you you get where I'm going with that. You everybody's got a track record. And how is your track record something that would make you different from other agents? If you're new, you might say, why did you choose a real estate career? Right? What was that? I've always loved real estate, always loved to invest in real estate. I've always had a design, you know, I've been in my whole life. I've been you know, whatever, how does this make you a great real estate agent? You're, you get the theme of this, right? You get the theme. So what I've done here, let me go to this. Um, and down here is where it puts, so I put in some things, right? Um, I, I could have put in another picture up here. There's a lot of ways that I could make this better. Um, I, you want to look at, oh, and I have to modify, I, I put in a typo just so I could show you how want, want to instantly, how about this, uh, want to instantly find out, see, I put it, I, I do that a lot, by the way, put in typos just so you can you know get an idea of how to correct things all right so i corrected that mm -hmm -hmm. so what it says is it hasn't corrected it yet well that's let me go back and i fix it down here want to all right it just instant gratification just takes too long you know so anyhow it hasn't updated yet but I have a link which would take somebody to instantly find your home's value page, right? Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool, All right? And I also, um, many of you may know, but not everybody, that I have a real estate school, and so I have a link there, and I have a YouTube channel, and I put in a video. And how I did that, it's relatively simple, right? When you go down here, I don't know why I didn't, anyhow. Um, it's it's relatively simple. You When you go into edit and you scroll down, this is a normal, you know, uh, type of a word editor. You can put in links, you can put in pictures, you can put in the table. And for those of you with a little geek, with a little geek, this is called um, source code which means you can drop in HTML code, which means you could have things formatted to look just about any way you want to. And you can open that up, that's the code, you could have the code someplace else and just pop it in, right? All of that is possible with that. And how did I put in a video? One of my suggestions is, is you might want to make a video. You might want to make a video. And I've had some people say, I don't like to make videos. I, so people sometimes say to me, I don't like the way I look on video, right? I've heard that a lot. And, you know, and I have to resist because I want to say to them, I'm sorry, but that's how you look. You know, I mean, you know, just, you know, just make a video. So what would the video be, right? Now, there are a lot of programs that for free would allow you to record a video. One of them is called Zoom. I don't know if you've ever heard of Zoom. But let's say you download the free version of Zoom because we're not making a long video. And the free version of Zoom, right, you can record what you're doing. You can record the screen and you've got a picture of you while you're doing it, which you can move around. And you can, so you were not actually inviting anybody to our Zoom call unless you want to, 
you're simply using Zoom to make a recording and you can share the screen. So one idea, like a few ideas of a video, one is let's say I wanted to explain to people how I know Silicon Valley, I know the San Francisco Bay Area, I, I whatever, right? A little about me video. I also could make a video where I go through my website and I show people, hey, if you're on my website, you can find this and you can find that. And I've got, I got a finance tab where it's hooked to a lender. I've got other resources. I've got, um, you know, you, you could do any of that stuff. And then what you would do, what you would do is find your thing. What you would do is, uh, when, and what I'm going to do, <coughs> that was a great way to begin. So this is a video that I made about the future of real estate. Oops, let me do that. And so if you wanted to know, so you would make a video and you could share it on YouTube, right? It's not a difficult thing. And when you get it, uh, what you want to do, you click on share, you click on embed. That is the embed code for the video. You could, you could use my video, right? If you felt like it, go ahead use my video um send them to my youtube channel uh for a couple of bucks you can even add closed captions right? you can do and i use loom there's a lot of these i'm not going to get into eventually we're going to talk about videos and stuff like that um all right well you you want now you some you give somebody your website they might go to it all right they might go to it they might look at it and they might judge you based upon what you have or haven't said. So if they click on the about me section on your website and there's nothing there, or you know, they might judge you, let me just say, right? And you could go to a lot of links to make this look fancy. Email signature. Um, my suggestion, right? Now, let's say you're you're at EXP, or this is pretty much true everywhere. Every office that I've worked at, all the big companies, all had programs or people that would produce an email signature for you. Um, Keller Williams, Century 21, they all did. Um, and so if you're at EXP, we got one too. Right, everybody does. Compass has them, and Togo Banker and, and Taro, they all do. And if you go to the marketing center at EXP, you can go down to where it says business cards, signature templates, and you can click on it and you can find one you like and you want, oops, here we go, email signatures, right? And you could say, I like that one, that's a business card but I want uh, to create an email signature and I'm gonna click on it and you're gonna make an email signature. My suggestion is um, don't use it, right? Um, don't use it. And I know there's more, but I'm not going to, to look at them. And um, I do not, I would not use that signature, right? If you're at Keller Williams, I wouldn't use the signature they give you. I wouldn't if I was at Compass, I wouldn't at Century 21 or I wouldn't use it. Why? A couple reasons. Number one, where do most people read their emails? Are most people reading their email on a desktop computer? This, by the way, I have a huge screen, right? You know, big enough to watch Spider-Man on it. You know, I have a big screen. Is that where people are generally reading their emails on compute big computer screens and things like that? Or are people more likely to be reading their email on their cell phone? And the answer is on their cell phone. Now, to me, what's kind of annoying is somebody sends me an email, one that asks me to call them, but their email signature is an image. You see, the issue with the let's create an email signature is they're all images. Right, and so if I, if you email me and your email signature is a picture of something, right, with, with your phone number and your email address and your website and everything as an image and I'm tapping on my phone, it doesn't go anywhere. I'm just tapping on an image. I can't call you 
from your email signature. Yet most people are reading their emails on a cell phone. I think it would be a wise idea that we would have a phone number that is hyperlinked in such a way, go away, that is such a way that they could tap on it and just call us. Does that seem like an unreasonable thing? So my suggestion is that your email signature includes hyperlinks as opposed to an image. The image looks nice, but you know, some of them, I, I see agents that have these, they're great big images. That, that doesn't show up on my cell phone. I have to like scroll in, right? And your phone number is part of the image and I have to try to memorize your phone number long enough to dial it when I could just tap it and call you because you made it a hyperlink. I'm just saying, right? I'm just saying. I do not like e one of the companies, who's an internet marketing company, they would that I was working with them. I was about to say their name aloud. They're still in existence, although I don't know how. And this was a total internet marketing company. And the email signature that they sent me had a Skype icon on it. I have Skype, but you know, I'm old. I have Skype too. Right. It had phone numbers and none of those, it had an email, none of those were hyperlinks. None of them worked. Right. Why would you email me a Skype link if I can't click on it and have Skype launch and, and talk to I, I just don't get it. Right. So um, my suggestion is, and the way I created this email signature, by the way, is and my suggestion for how to create a good email signature, which I've got videos on as well. I get videos on this, is I do it in Google Docs, right? It's, uh, and the way I do it in Google Docs is I go and I create a table. And the table is usually at least two. And so I can have an image on one side and I can have text on the other side. I could have a logo, I could have text. I can move things around. And then once I'm done, I get rid of the boxes and then I use that as my signature. Um, if I have question issues with my KV Corp portal, should I reach out to EXP versus EXP World? I don't know. Um, I've never had, if, if you have, it's a good question. How would you contact KV Corp? Now look to the right. I asked them a question this morning. Notice how they're texting me. Hi, we haven't heard back from you. I'll stand by for your reply two minutes ago. I haven't heard back from you. They're, they're, they're on me. Um, um, <laughs> so I'm going to reply to the guy. So if you want to reach out to Inside Real Estate, who runs KV Core, when you're in KV Core, down in the bottom right, there's a place where you could text somebody, right? And they will reply and they'll give you links and things like that if you need to, right? And I've never, I have never gone to EXP World to talk to KV Core. I, I, I'm not even sure that they're there, right? But I've never done that. So how did I get this here? Right. What I did, what I did is um, because I'm really lazy. First of all, I got my, my assistant made my email signature because she's more patient than me and frankly better at it. But what I did once I made the email signature is in Gmail, right? And I'm a Gmail person in Gmail. So let me go here and I go to settings. And I scroll down, there's my email signature. Right? Notice it looks an awful lot like, and so I just copied that, right? Control A, Control C, I copied the whole thing. I went over here, I pasted it in, I hit enter, and there it is, and it works just fine, right? There it is. Works just fine. What is the benefit of having a smart number for KV Core? I'm going to cover smart numbers in another session, but to say it quickly, I send out hundreds of text messages every week to people, hundreds, oftentimes at one time. Your, your phone isn't going to like it if you try doing that, right? And not everybody likes getting them, 
um, you know, mo but most of the people um, are, are, are people in my database and don't mind. At least, you know, they don't complain that much. So the smart number allows me to send out bulk text messages, right? Way beyond what I would be allowed to do with my phone. Google Voice, I can send 10 text messages at one time, but not 200 or 300, which I can do through KV Core, no additional charge. The other thing is, is that sometimes real estate agents don't want their cell phone number on their marketing materials because people might call you at weird times and ask questions and things like that. And so they just don't want it. And so the smart number gives you another phone number that you can use on marketing materials that is not your cell phone number. It's not but um, primarily for texting purposes. If you start to want to do this seriously, you need to pay them $27 a month um, in order to get your own smart number. Otherwise, it's a shared number. That's gonna come up in another session. All right, so that's my rant about email signatures. If you're really into email signatures, there's a company called Y Stamp. I used to pay them to do this, I'm not right now because I went ahead and made it in Google you know, documents. But here is a realtor, these are all their different email signatures and they have a whole bunch of things on the page that you could do and you can create. It, it costs, I don't know, $5 a month or something like that. But if I'm willing to pay them, um, and there's a 30% off, early bird discount, right? How much is it? I don't know. But notice all I have to do is type all this up, upload my image, and put in my social media, put in, um, there are different templates. I, I've got, I can change the color schemes. I can uh, attach apps to it. The green footer says, don't print me out. Uh, I can put in a legal disclaimer, I can put in images, I can put in quotes, I can put in a styled signature like that one, kind regards, looks like I actually wrote something, right? I have all these other things that I could put in, right? See, so what are they charging? It's $3.90 a month, $3.90 a month, and I can make an email signature that looks really, really cool, right? All of the links are hyperlinks, even the phone number would be a hyperlink. Um, all of that works. They'll make you a free one, by the way, that you could try. But it's going to say at the bottom, it was created by Weinstein. And get your own free email signature here. And if that doesn't bother you, just use the free one. But if you want to upgrade, you can, there you go. Um, one of the other things that it will do is it'll convert all this into an HTML code, which once you've done this, once you've made a Y stamp all tricked out, everything you want, email signature, it'll give you the code, and then you can go back to KV Core and paste in the code, and everything is everything is cool. You want to include your signature on all outgoing email, right? I would select that. All these other things, notice these items will not appear on your website, they're for information only. I, I don't know, I, I, I didn't bother to fill any of those out right? because I don't know. Right. So let me go back here, uh, have I, I'm gonna save, have I saved it? Yeah, maybe. All right, so put in, put in your social media, go ahead and put it in. What else do I have? I, I've covered the realtor signature. You can put in um, a call to action. CTA means call to action. Find out what your home is worth. <laughs> Sorry about that. Find your dream home, all of that. Changing the phone number on your KV Core website. I already went through that. This is a question I get asked a lot because there's like a default, maybe it's a EXP phone number, I don't know. If you put in your cell phone information and click show on file, then it's going to go in. Um, somebody's right, Charles, did you have a question? You raised your hand or did you wish to speak? 
I just saw that you raised your hand, Charles. No? All right, I'm putting down. You have to raise it again if you wish to talk. All right. So what else do we need to do? Import your leads. Now, I've made a hyperlink to a KV Core thing. I've also explained it here as to what you can do. Um, there are two or three ways of doing it. Let me start with, um, you go over to the left and notice one of the choices is Smart CRM, right? We've just been looking at the, at the dashboard. Next week, we're gonna make sure your website has all of the widgets, it has all the areas that you want. Um, that's next week. But you might want to get all of your contacts into your database. So if you go to contacts, well, this has really got a, a lot of stuff over. How do I make that go? I just want this to go away. All right, there we go. All right. So notice it, once we've um, gone to Smart CRM, all contacts over here, there's an add a contact. And so if we click on that, we could add a individual contact one at a time, right? Or if we want to, I have to figure out where it is. Marketing, listings, dashboard, huh? Transactions, web ideas. How could I not know where that is? Right off the top of my head. So we're going to, um, why don't I go and look at my, importing your leads. So there are a few ways in which you can import your existing leads, a CSV file, export, synchronize. Let me look at what this one says. All right, this is one of the articles. So this is an article that I've linked on how to do it. There's a little video. There's a longer video on importing leads and there's about templates and you could let them handle it or you could do it yourself. And uh, let me see if I can find it again. I don't know why, it just wasn't there. I've got a lot of people in my, maybe Ken can help me out. What I wanna do is, Hmm. Quick actions, add contracts. I just don't remember. It's just not showing up right here. All contracts. Uh, maybe it's in the marketplace. Don't know. Most popular. Third party tools, 13 pound products. So once I find the link, I'll show it to you. I just don't, I just don't know where I'm missing. I'm missing something right now and I don't know where it is. Uh, there's a YouTube video for iPhones. Thank you, Helen. All right. I believe it's got to be here where 50 rows and so that's how we export the contracts. Move to pond. Hmm. I don't remember where, I don't see where it is. Let me, that's not what I wanted to look at. So these are the different ways of doing it. Um, and I, I've got this link, there's a template. So this is the template. And I'm just gonna explain how the template works. What you would wanna do is download the template and what you need to do, this is one of the, the ways of doing it, is you would, here's a link for this. US lead import overview. Um, so 
there's two ways of doing it. Number one is you take their template and then you don't change the headers, right? First name, last name, do not do anything with row number one. And then what I would do is in Google or Yahoo or wherever your contacts are, you export them and you export them as a comma separated value. And then what I do when I do this myself is I copy the like everybody's first name and I paste it in here. In other words, I would just copy that row, paste it in here, copy the next row, paste it in there, copy the next row, paste it in there. Um, if it's a, I, I put in the status, is it a lead, is it a sphere of influence? Um, I think I'm gonna cover that up more next week because I'm running out of time. I'll, I will talk about hashtags and cell phones and all of that. And then once I finish the template, the template can be imported right into KV Core. Um, I believe it's under lead response tools. Same, thank you. I, I've actually done this before, but I'm having difficulty. Uh, and where's my... All right. So lead engine, ah, oh, yes, that might, that might be it. So um, hold, bulk import, thank you very much, Sandra. I appreciate that. I made a mental note where it was, but I forgot where I put it. So if you go over to bulk import, um, two choices. Number one, you can just take your spreadsheet, export it from Google, Outlook, or yes, Yahoo, whatever you've got, and you can submit the file to Inside Real Estate, and in three or four days, they will have imported it for you, right? And by the way, every time you import, there's a hashtag. Next week, we'll talk a little bit about that, which would allow you to identify that export and pull up everybody that was exported, right? And they'll just do it for you, or over on the right, you can do it yourself, and that's where you download the, the spreadsheet, you drop in all the different columns in the right place, and then you can upload. The value of that one is that it only takes a few minutes to do, not a few days, right? And they process it, but in 10, 20 minutes, everything will be there. What else did I put on this link? Um, adding your DRE number to the website. I've also added a bunch of places where you could get more information about it. There's what's called an agent success plan. This is a, a useful link. It's a, a course that they have on it. And the other thing I just wanna make sure you're familiar with is, where is it? If you go down to support and training and you go to courses, there's a lot of support for this. I, my recommendation is to start with the agent quick start, it's a basic overview, agent success plan, or if this sounds like way too much, come next week. Right, so get your profile set up, get your social media connected, get your About Me page done, get your email signature. Those are the homework assignments for this week, right? This is the homework assignments. Next week, we're gonna talk about, um, and by the way, also import your, your database if you, if you have time. Next week, we're gonna talk about how to make your web page have the content that you want it to have with the calls to actions that you want it to have and um, even we're going to set up a few of the landing pages and squeeze pages next week all right thank you um thank you everybody for being here and i if you've got any issues or questions about this feel free to reach out to me otherwise i'll see you guys next week we're going to do websites right isn't that great have a great day everybody